Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Horror Mine, the home for all things horror. In honor of International Women's Day, which occurred this past Monday, I'll be breaking down and discussing the 2011 horror film, The Woman. Now, this one had a really intriguing plot, and I went in completely blind. When a man comes across a woman who appears to be completely wild and feral, he decides to capture her and attempts to teach her how to become a civilized person. I'll be honest here, ladies and gents, this was an okay film. The film is definitely carried by Pollyanna McIntosh's performance as the titular woman. I feel that the film tries to explore one too many plot lines as opposed to focusing on the already interesting main plot. However, it did enough to keep me interested until the end, which is absolutely bonkers and gory. It wasn't until I finished a film that I found out that it's actually the second film in a trilogy. I'll definitely be checking out the other two movies out of curiosity, but you guys let me know if you'd be interested in watching me break down the other two films. Thank you so much to everyone watching my videos and everyone who subscribed to the channel. We are almost to 100 subscribers, and I truly appreciate each and every one of you, and hope to keep making quality content that you all enjoy. If you have a movie you'd like to see me break down, let me know in the comments down below. But without further ado, let's talk horror movies. The movie begins and we see the titular woman living in the woods. She appears to have a large wound on her belly that obviously hasn't received proper first aid. We see the woman entering a cave and growling at an unknown animal which she kills off screen. Then we get a very trippy montage of the woman running through the woods and sleeping in the wild as we see her slowly approach the camera which literally had me saying, what the heck is going on right now? We are then introduced to the rest of the film's characters, the Cleek family. Patriarch Chris and his wife Belle, their teenage daughter Peggy, their young son Brian, and their youngest daughter, Darlin. The Cleeks are attending a barbecue and we see Brian watching as three boys bully a young girl named Jenny. He does absolutely nothing and then starts shooting hoops as the young girl starts screaming off screen. This scene already had me pissed off because not even five minutes into the movie and we already have an extremely unlikable character in Brian. The cliques live in a farmhouse in the middle of nowhere surrounded by woods. The film quickly establishes that Chris is a very manipulative patriarch who has a very particular way of leading his family. He almost treats them like employees as opposed to actual family members. The next day, we see Chris out hunting in the woods with his rifle. He then comes across the woman who is currently bathing herself in a river. He sneakily follows her to her cave and we can tell that he is obviously head over heels for her. He goes home and tells his family to clean out the cellar without giving them a reason. He asks Belle to trust him on this one. We then see Chris working tirelessly in the shed overnight as Belle and Peggy wonder what the hell he's doing down there. The next morning, we see Chris capture the woman and then knocks her out. I don't want to hurt you. The movie then cuts to the first scene of what I believe to be a totally unnecessary plotline involving Peggy and her teacher, Miss Ratone. We also get a scene of Brian being a complete douche to one of his female classmates. He literally sticks a piece of gum in her hairbrush because she's better than him at basketball. What a little douchebag. We now see that Chris has created a contraption in the cellar and has imprisoned the woman. While seemingly asleep, he inspects her body and makes the mistake of sticking his fingers in her mouth. <laughs> Holy shit! Ouch! After seeing this scene, I thought to myself, so this is the kind of movie I'm in for, huh? Nice. A completely shocked Chris knocks out the woman with three punches and tells her that civilized people don't behave that way. Yeah, no shit, dude. At this point, it becomes pretty obvious that Chris has a huge power issue in which he feels the need to treat everyone else like trash in order to feel better about himself. Him wanting to quote unquote civilize the woman is really just an excuse for him to have complete control over another individual. Chris formally introduces the woman to his family, who all appear to be understandably shocked and confused. And by all, I mean everyone but Brian and Darlin. Brian because he's a creepy little douchebag, and Darlin because she's just a kid and doesn't know any better. Do we really get to keep her? We do. Chris attempts to feed the woman a bowl of oatmeal, but she rejects it. Actor Sean Bridgers does such a good job portraying Chris Cleek. 
Chris just seems like a normal, likable daddy-o, but he actually turns out to be a complete douchebag and maniac. Chris reiterates to his family that they are all going to have to share in the responsibility in taking care and looking after the woman. He even compares it to having to take care of the dogs. After dinner, we see Darlin go out to the cellar and place her radio to the woman. She tells her that when she is sad, she likes to listen to the radio. This felt like a very sad scene to me because it just shows how little Darlin knows about the situation. While she thinks that what is happening is completely normal, down in the cellar there is a human being trapped and being treated like an animal, something that no one should ever have to experience. Later that night, Belle asks Chris if it's right to keep the woman trapped that way and he proceeds to nonchalantly slap her and hops right into bed. And just when you thought this character couldn't be any more unlikable. We then see another scene of Peggy at school, where her teacher, Miss Ratone, is questioning her about her weird recent behavior. Again, I felt these scenes were completely unnecessary and could have been taken out of the movie to help with the pacing and better storytelling. Anyways, we see Peggy at school break down crying for reasons unknown to the universe during gym class. We also see Brian sitting alone in his class and seemingly daydreaming about the woman. We also see the woman, now possibly starving, eating the now rotten oatmeal covered with maggots off the ground. Brian goes out to the doghouse and feeds the dogs. We see him feed the third dog from the first person perspective of the dog for an unknown reason. The dog barks at him and he falls backward right into a pile of dog shit. Serves the little shit right. The movie again cuts back to Miss Ratone, but this time, she's questioning Peggy about why she's been acting so weird, but Peggy tells her that her business is her own. We see Brian create a secret peephole into the cellar so that he can take a peek at the woman. Chris now decides that it's time to clean up the woman and wash her up, but he does so in a very cruel manner. He proceeds to spray her down with a freaking pressure washer to the disgust of both Peggy and Belle. Peggy pleads with her father to stop and eventually takes matters into her own hands and turns off the pressure washer. We then see the woman say the word please several times and Chris says that she is finally learning. They put a dress on the woman made by Belle but Belle doesn't think she likes it. We then see Chris giving food and water to the woman and she then attempts to thank him in English. We then see Miss Ratone having a conversation about Peggy where she says that she believes Peggy is pregnant. She attempts to contact Peggy's parents to tell them over the phone, but Peggy is the one that picks up the phone and quickly hangs it up. Look guys, at this point, I was almost fed up with this Miss Ratone storyline. I wonder why she even cared that much in the first place and thought she should probably just mind her own business, as it seems she might make things worse for Peggy. During the night, Chris sneaks out to the cellar while he believes his family to be asleep. In a completely disgusting scene, he proceeds to have sex with the restrained woman while Brian watches through his peephole. We see that Belle is awake and breaks down into tears as she obviously knows what's going on. Chris returns to bed and sleeps with Belle as if nothing ever happened. The next day, Peggy asks to stay home from school and we find out that Brian only has a half day. Chris asks Brian what he'll do with the time off and tells him not to do anything he wouldn't do. At this point, I literally said, Oh shit, here we go. You shouldn't have said that. The little shit goes home and makes his way into the cellar with a pair of pliers. He tries to feed the woman a cookie, but it is clear that she does not like him one bit. In a completely sick scene, he proceeds to torture the woman with the pliers. We hear her screams of pain from Peggy's perspective as she rushes out to see what the hell is going on. We see that the little shit stabbed the woman and twisted off one of her nipples with the pliers confirming that he is one sick and demented little boy. Peggy chases him off and apologizes to the woman for what's happening to her. If you're so sorry, then let her go. The entire time I was waiting for someone to just do the right thing. Chris comes home and is confronted about Brian's behavior by Belle. She tells Chris that Brian sexually assaulted the woman. Chris plays off Brian's sick behavior, saying that he is only a teenage boy with urges. She finally does the right thing and tells Chris that he is a complete psycho and that she is leaving him and taking the girls with her. She says that he can keep his little rapist son to himself and that they can both burn in the fires of Mordor. 
He then tells her that anophthalmia is her shame and proceeds to beat her down with a three-piece and a soda. <gasps> what the hell? If he wasn't already before, Chris has now gone absolutely berserk. Thanks to the spirit of absolute horrible timing, Miss Raton shows up to the Clique Manor to tell Chris that Peggy is pregnant. Chris does not take the news well and proceeds to knock out Miss Raton with one slap. He then tells Brian to get the rope and we finally get the movie's absolutely bonkers ending. Chris and Brian drag Miss Raton into the doghouse by a rope. Peggy attempts to stop her father but is unsuccessful. She runs into the house and grabs a set of keys as Belle begins to wake up from her knockout. Chris and Brian throw Miss Raton into the dog pen and lock the door. Chris yells out to Miss Raton if she can say anophthalmia and out of nowhere, an eyeless girl pops out and takes a chunk out of Miss Raton's neck. The eyeless girl continues to take bites out of Miss Raton, who unsuccessfully attempts to escape as she is eaten alive. We then see Peggy rush into the cellar and freeze the woman. Finally free, she crosses paths with Belle, and by the look on her face, she means absolute business. She proceeds to perform a running power slam on Belle and completely eats half of her face off in a gruesome manner. I'll be censoring some of these crazy gory bits out as I don't want this video to become age restricted, so I truly apologize to my fellow goer lovers. The woman tosses Belle out of the ring as she is left to die. I felt completely bad for Belle in this scene, guys. She didn't deserve to die like that, especially in such a painful way. She was definitely just a victim of Chris's abusive behavior, and in the end, she ended up dying as she tried to do the right thing. We see Chris and Brian staring at and talking about disposing of what's left of Mr. Tone, completely unaware of what's happening outside. The woman grabs a long metal blade outside of the doghouse and opens the door. Completely shocked and horrified, Chris attempts to grab his rifle as the woman proceeds to cut Brian completely in half. Chris manages to grab his rifle, but it's too late. The woman slaps it out of his hand as he accidentally shoots himself on the left side of his face. She then penetrates his stomach with ease with her bare hands and slowly rips out his heart. She then takes a bite out of his heart while looking into his dying eyes, and it was in this moment that Chris realizes he fucked up. Even though the woman is a murderous cannibal, it was nice to see her finally free and get revenge on those who imprisoned her. As brutal and gruesome as her revenge was, the woman seemed like an absolute powerful badass in my opinion. As we see the woman walk away from the shed, we see the eyeless girl following her out on all fours. The pair approaches the house as Peggy and Darlin are attempting to make a run for it. Darlin then says that it's Lady and Sister, and we realize that the eyeless girl is actually a member of the clique family. Now, I had to look this up, but when Chris spoke about anophthalmia, he was actually referring to the medical condition of his own daughter. We realized that Chris and Belle decided to hide her away and trap her like an animal because they were ashamed of how she was born, which is completely heartbreaking. In the film's final scene, we see the woman hilariously let Darlin lick off the blood off her fingers. Darlin cracks an awkward but cute smile, then the woman takes Darlin and walks away into the woods. Peggy, completely shocked and confused, decides to follow behind the trio as the film fades to black. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was the woman. I'll be honest in saying that on first viewing, I wasn't too impressed with the film. I initially thought that the film wasted its interesting premise and that the Miss Raton storyline was completely useless and made the entire film suffer. Upon watching it a second time, however, I can see what the film was going for and that it wasn't trying to take itself too seriously. I can say that I definitely enjoyed it a lot more the second time around. Although I still feel that it would have been a much better film if it solely focused on the woman and cut out all that Miss Raton crap. You didn't need Miss Raton as a plot device to unveil that Peggy was pregnant or to lead to the eventual escape of the woman. All in all, ladies and gents, The Woman was a good movie with an interesting plot, great performances, and an absolutely crazy and bloody ending. Like I said in the beginning, it wasn't until after seeing the movie that I found out it was actually the second film in a trilogy, with the third film being called Darlin'. 
so I'll definitely be checking out the first and third movies to see what those are all about. But ladies and gentlemen, as always, I hope you enjoy the video. I cannot wait to see y'all right back here in the Horror Mine. Y'all stick around.